Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, I'm Professor Huhtamo from the um, UCLA Department of Design Media Arts, and I would like to welcome you tonight for this event. So you are at the place called EDA. That stands for the um, Experimental Media Arts. And, um, and I think that uh, tonight the, uh, the name of the place and the, uh, the person you will be hearing and, and uh, seeing, doing quite astonishing thing, match each other, I would say, uh, perfectly. The um, event tonight uh, will be um, so-called um, uh, UC Regents Lecture. Um, Regents Lecture is a kind of an honor that is um, sort of like um, only uh, conveyed by highly distinguished uh, masters of their own field. And I think that the uh, person who's going to uh, give you a lecture, but also at the same time a performance, perfectly matches that, uh, that definition. So I would just like to very briefly say a few words about um, Toshio Iwai. And to save time, um, I will keep it brief, because as you will soon see yourself, Toshio has plenty to show, plenty of sound, plenty of images, and also plenty of performance. And some of that will involve also you, audience. So to begin, I'm looking at the Wired magazine, which many of you probably know. This issue is from May 1997. So over 20 years ago. And if I open it from one spread, I find an article which is Portrait of the Artist as a Young Geek. And if I just read you a few uh, sentences from the beginning, it says, Toshio Iwai has the soul of an artist, but the head of a nerd. He's using both, he's using both to invent interactive digital art. And in a way, many ways, this is correct, but that's not the only thing that Toshio Iwai has been doing. So indeed, I think Toshio Iwai is a creator, creative person who is very difficult to put into one category because his work covers so many different things. And we can say that all these things that he has been dealing with astonishingly have turned into something very uh, significant, something important that has created a kind of a, I would say, global cult following for the work of Toshio Iwai. So there is a lot of digital art. There's low-tech, there's high-tech, there are games, there are new kind of audiovisual musical instruments, and many other things that Toshio will be himself talking about. But there's also something extraordinary, which is his children's books. So in the past 10 years, uh, Toshio, as a really a one-man design and art workshop, has created a series of books that have sold astonishing numbers, been translated to several languages. I heard that the printing figure in, in Japan, the recent one is 2.8 million copies, which is significant for any type of cultural product, but not to say anything about children's books. And how all these varied things fit to each other I think Toshio will uh, explain in his lecture. This is a very rare opportunity to meet and hear Toshio here on the, uh, on the west coast of the United States. So he flew here and he will be staying for two weeks with the department also teaching master classes here. 
But without any uh, further ado, please help me welcome Toshio Iwai. <laughs> I'm Toshio Iwai, maybe geek. <laughs> and actually, uh, as uh, like Eric already explained about it, and uh, I've been uh, making uh, children's books for the last 10 years. And uh, actually, uh, I, I've been thinking I'm all, almost uh, terminated making media art. <laughs> and, uh, Actually, uh, in the last month, I went to uh, see the movie uh, Star Wars, <laughs> The Last Jedi. And I thought, oh, Luke Skywalker is yeah, very similar to my position. <laughs> <laughs> I terminated making a media art, and I moved to, from Tokyo to the uh, countryside and uh, living very quietly, <laughs> but uh, suddenly Eruki came to see me and uh, asked me, please come to UCLA. I wished uh, if it was a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and uh, I thought, oh, maybe it's worth to tell about my history, and maybe I could connect those two things, media arts and children books here. So, actually, uh, from tomorrow, I will have uh, uh, the special master classes for both uh, undergraduate and the graduates. So, uh, we, I am uh, here, uh, my uh, wife, Kyo, and she's also the artist, and making uh, children's books as well. And uh, we uh, are going to uh, do the special class, classroom master classes. Uh, for the undergraduates uh, from tomorrow. But anyway, uh, as a beginning, and uh, I, will, I would like to tell you all the most of the um, I can, uh, traces of my media art and uh, what I have been doing and uh, what I was thinking. So, first of all, I would like to check uh, your uh, condition, I, I mean, uh, uh, condition of, you, of your perception. Okay. Now, I would like to test your eyes and the brain. <laughs> Please turn off the light. So, here I would like to have a first test. So, this is an image of a very famous uh, paintings. It's Mona Lisa, you already know, of course. And uh, here, I have a little red dot in the center. Please point your eyes. Please keep your eyes onto the uh, red dot for a while. Okay? Don't move your eyes. Don't blink as much as you can do. Okay? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Can you see the image? <laughs> Can you see it? Okay? Okay, let's go to the <laughs> next test. <laughs> test two. The image is like this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, please point again. <laughs> Keep your eyes on to the, this red dot. <laughs> okay, let's start. Please look at the red dot. Let's take a longer time to get a better effect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Five. Don't don't move non, don't move your eyes. Five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> hey, please raise your hands if you see. Did you see it? 
Good, good. So now, this is the effect of after image. So now, your eyes, okay, and the brain's okay. <laughs> if you don't see anything, you should go to the hospital. <laughs> and if you see many other faces, you should go <laughs> to the hospital too. He's still there. Oh. <laughs> It will be a nightmare. <laughs> okay, oh, please turn on the light. Okay, so let's start uh, my presentation. So the first part is the, uh, the origins. So this is my very old pictures uh, where I grew up and uh, actually uh, I was a little boy and uh, uh, it was a really a simple and wild life yeah, uh, at home. And uh, this is my first work, <laughs> drawing in drawer. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I have drawn the, uh, fishes with legs. I think this is a, uh, I can, I think uh, it's a kind of the invention. <laughs> I wanted to draw the, a kind of unusual uh, things uh, for this. Then, this is a picture of my father. Uh, he uh, brought me to uh, many different places, like uh, to the sea and the mountain, and uh, usually uh, uh, he used motorbike, and uh, I was in uh, a little cage of bamboo <laughs> on the motorbike, and I went to uh, fish, we went to fishing actually. But uh, when we went to fishing, um, actually my father didn't bring, didn't carry anything. And I was wondering why, but uh, at the seashore, he asked me to collect some uh, like uh, steaks and uh, old uh, fishing line and uh, uh, some other things. And uh, we made a uh, uh, perfect tool for fishing. And uh, I learned that uh, oh, we can make anything um, um, by ourselves. Then uh, another uh, good experience at that time was the, uh, we had a really uh, huge event in Osaka in 1970. It was an expo, uh, Osaka Expo, and uh, especially I really loved to see the Apollo 11 and uh, a stone from the moon at the, uh, the United States uh, Pavilion, and I was so excited about it. And this is a family portrait of my, um, the, uh, of, of, uh, of my childhood, and uh, I had a, I have a three of the sisters, and uh, she is my mom. And one day, when maybe, maybe I don't remember exactly, but uh, maybe I, I was uh, uh, eight or nine, and she suddenly said to me, I won't buy toys anymore. <laughs> and I was really shocked. <laughs> but she also said, if you won't make them by yourself, so, and uh, actually, uh, my father used to be uh, a technician at the electricity company, and uh, he, he's a kind of engineer. And uh, he's had the time at the weekend, and uh, actually, uh, he helped me a lot. And my mother bought me um, some books about uh, making something or some materials and tools, and it helped me a lot. And so I started to make something. And this is a, a very uh, important notebook for me. I created this one about when I was uh, 10 years old. And uh, I have drawn many uh, things that I liked, like motors and uh, light bulbs and uh, batteries and uh, propellers and so on, on the, on the uh, uh, front page. And the inside is like this. I wrote down the content and uh, 
here I have a title and some uh, uh, some dia uh, diagrams and uh, so on. So I try to invent <laughs> some unusual things. For example, this is convenient umbrella. <laughs> so it's not necessary to hold umbrella by yourself. <laughs> but I thought, oh, this is unstable. And here, improve the convenient umbrella. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't created this one, but uh, I really enjoyed to think about it. Then I wrote down everything on this notebook. E electric scissors, window wiping machine. <laughs> Maybe it's not uh, good for yeah, the, uh, the, uh, making uh, the glasses uh, glass better, but uh, here's a... Uh, a toys, action car, centipede car, water jet rocket, hot fire robot, and rotary pump, and <laughs> so on. So it was my main hobby to uh, think about uh, about a new invention and write down on this notebook. And uh, sometimes I created one. So this red mark is the, uh, uh, the like a stamp uh, which I have done mm -hmm. already. So here, I would like to uh, introduce you another hobby at that time. It was uh, flip books in my childhood. So this is the uh, textbook from my uh, uh, primary school and the notebooks. And uh, for example, this is uh, a notebook of, of math. And uh, inside of the note, there are little drawings on the side of the note like this. <laughs> so I can show you how it works. So staircase, someone going down, but fall off and uh, killed. <laughs> and egg. And uh, so the uh, little bar come out and uh, there is another boy from the, uh, the uh, egg again. So the, the earth revolving around the sun is like a yeah a science note, and this is the character Mr. Fry. Mr. Fry tried to <laughs> transform into the mask rider, <laughs> but uh, finally he got different uh, yeah <laughs> character. <laughs> So this is the uh, yeah, little animation which I was uh, drawing during the classroom. <laughs> so I was a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, I would like to introduce a, a, a brief history of the moving images. So I would like to, could, could you turn on the uh, yeah, projector? Okay. So yeah, here I have a, a little video camera so I can introduce some of my collection about the uh, history of moving images. Oops. Oh, just a moment, please, please. Yeah, please close it. Yeah, I forgot to introduce some pictures. So when I entered to the university, um, I was interested in making animations, but uh, making animation film, I need money and uh, I needed uh, a lot of time to make it. Then I remember that uh, um, when I was a child, I was making a flip books, and it was very easy to make a real animation. So as an exercise of the making animation film, I started making a, a flip books again. But uh, soon I knew that uh, uh, in the history of moving images or history of um, uh, the movies, the flip book itself is very important invention of it. Then I opened, um, I started to read the uh, books about the, um, the moving uh, image, history of the moving images at the library. Then I found some interesting object from the uh, 19th century. So I can show you some pictures like this. Maybe you already know about it, but uh, 
Then, okay, please, please open the projector. Okay, here I would like to introduce the real things. So for example, this is a flip book with uh, old black and white pictures. So you can see very smooth moving images from this. And this is also very famous MyBridge galloping horse. So these are the free books. And uh, this is also a very important invention from the uh, 19th century. And uh, this is called the Somatrope. So you can, you can combine two images, like, uh, like ripping the uh, disk like this. So this was invented in 1825, I think. So it's very old. Oh, it's opposite. Yeah, like this. It's very simple. And soon, this phenakistoscope, this is called phenakistoscope, this is invented. And actually, uh, with this somatrope, we cannot see the uh, movement. It's just uh, uh, compositing the two images. But uh, here, uh, you can see a real animation with this very simple uh, spinning disk. So there are thin threads around the disk, but uh, we need a meter to see the moving image. So let's try. Okay. So you should reflect the surface of this disk on the mirror and uh, spin it, and then you can look at the the front from through the hole, those streets, when you are spinning the disc. Can you see it? Maybe maybe I can zoom in. <laughs> and uh, actually, yeah, we need a light here. I hope you can see it. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> Actually, it's better to see the real one, but uh, yeah, you can see the effect. So I have uh, two more different type of the image. So this one is also very uh, unique. Actually, yeah, 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 surprisingly, the animation is very good. Even, even they haven't seen any animation films. Yeah, even they didn't have a YouTube. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> and the other one is also very interesting. Isn't that amazing? Really nice. So this was invented uh, in 1832, and soon they improved the idea. And uh, this is also the very great invention in the uh, pre-cinema history. And it's called Zotrop, of course. And uh, the difference between this plasticinoscope and the Zotrop is the, uh, here 
you need a mirror to reflect the image, this one. And uh, only one person can see the image, basically. But uh, with this zoetrope, you can put this paper strip with uh, uh, animated drawings. You can put this strip inside of the drum, and uh, you can spin it. OK, let's try first. You can see, it's also funny. <laughs> And actually, with this device, you can stand around. So you can see the moving image at the same time. So it's, it, I think this is a one great improvement from the Fenaxi scope. And the other thing is the, uh, here, the software. I, I say this animated image is software. And uh, this disk itself is the, uh, a kind of hardware. And uh, this software and the hardware is just one. But uh, with this Zotrop, it's separated. So you can change the software if you want. So you can see many different types of uh, animation images with this Zotrop. And also, the, as all, I already told you, but uh, uh, many people can stand around and uh, see, they can watch the moving images at the same time. This is also a great improvement. So let's imagine if the, this paper strip is much, much longer. So it will be a kind of the movie film. And uh, if you can have a lens and uh, light sources, you can project the moving image on the screen. So this will be a beginning of the mass media movies. So I was really interested in this kind of the improvement and the history of the moving images. And I also thought that, uh, oh, this is connected to my childhood. Then I started to create some trials with those ideas. And uh, actually, uh, when I entered uh, university, I started to create some interesting uh, flip books by myself. Okay. I was a freshman at the University of Tsukuba in Japan, and uh, actually uh, this is the real flip book which I created. So here you can see the it's a Japanese 100 yen coin. I used the frottage technique with a coin. I stick the several coins on the table, and I place the paper, and I use the colored pencil to trace it. So you can see. So 100 yen invaded by one yen. <laughs> So it's returned. So wh when I scratch the colored pencil, gradually I moved the pa po position of the paper. Then I got a longer uh, image or shorter image. So I really enjoyed to create this, those images. So, so even numbers are moving inside of the uh, coin. Okay, and the other thing is the, uh, after I entered the university, I have learned the computer programming at the, uh, at the computer class. So it was a really, really beginning of the computer. Uh, it was uh, 1981, so I had only the green character display and uh, just uh, some uh, special machine like uh, dot impact printers or XY plotters. And uh, I used the XY plotter to make this flip book. Mm 
So it's very accurate. So at that time, it was a big boom of the wireframe computer graphics. <laughs> so I wanted to have uh, uh, those Im fantastic images in my hand. So it was uh, one of the dream. So I decided to create uh, this flipbook. And uh, during I was making those flipbooks, and uh, at first, it was uh, just uh, like an a exercise or training for my animated films. But uh, gradually, I started to think, Maybe this is more interesting than creating films. I don't know why, but uh, I really loved to play back those moving images in my hand. And I realized that maybe um, when I, I was watching the uh, TV screen or uh, movie screen, I was just sitting on a chair and uh, watching the images. But here, I'm using my hand and the body, and it's interactive. We can control the speed of the moving images. And uh, even we, we feel the book itself, and it has a weight, and it has a tactile sen sensations, and uh, even I hear the sound of flipping pages, and uh, uh, I feel the movement of the air. So all, all feeling which Flipbook makes make, made me very happy. So then I started to doubt about the history of moving images. So please close the projector. OK, thank you. So here I want to introduce so oh, this one is already, yeah, you have seen, and this is also you have seen. And uh, this one, this is the uh, uh, video books I named. So I took a video image by video camera. Then I printed all of the frames on the paper. Then I recreated a flip book. So I wanted to compare two same, exactly same video images. One is on the TV screen, one is in my hand as a flip book. So I wanted to make sure which one is more comfortable, more uh, enjoyable for me. So then I made sure that, uh, oh, I love this one. <laughs> So I also started to improve the other uh, moving image devices like phenakiscopes and uh, uh, zoetrops. So here I used a copy machine to create uh, 12 uh, animated images on the grass of the copy machine. I put the scissors like this and I took a one copy and slightly, I moved, the, I changed the position of the uh, scissors. So I created an animation like this. So this is the strings. <laughs> My hand. So this is all the eight millimeter film, so yeah. It, this is a peanuts, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to have a textures because the copy machine is just a black and white. Scissors and hammers. and the uh, rice grains. <laughs> yeah, I placed li many rice grains on the gra grass plate of the copy machine, and I made a hole by finger. <laughs> and uh, it's a hoil of an origami cra uh, crane, so flying. So like this, I created the Funaki with the copy machines. 
then I saw that, uh, oh, it's very fun to combine modern technologies and uh, old ideas, like uh, XY plot programming and uh, flip books and the copy machine with uh, Fenix scopes. And this is also the, I made uh, computer programming to generate the numbers of uh, patterns of, for the Fenakist scopes. It was also very, very interesting. I was looking for images which people in 19th century could not see. So I wanted to try to use new technologies, modern technologies to improve the how those devices are interesting or they have a possibility to uh, see the new uh, emotional things. And here I created, a, uh, I kind of improved Zotrop with a 3D model. So I created uh, some uh, uh, abstract figure It's like a, a worm and walking on a staircase or running man. So I created the 3D things inside of the Zotrop. I thought that the, uh, it would be more interesting than using just the paper strips. Then soon I realized that uh, maybe I should make a bigger, larger, installation with the ideas. Then I got an idea to use a video monitor as a kind of flashlight or a strobe light. Then there is a, a turntable which I placed uh, my figure, uh, 120 figures on the uh, turntable. And it spins by motor. And when the turntable spins, the video monitor on the top acts as a strobe light, and it gives a beautiful illusion of the animation. So I was showing the, my, my installation for kids. So even kids already know about the mechanism of the movies and TV and so on, but even they are so sur they surprised. <laughs> yeah. This astonishment is the uh, I think, which I wanted to have always. So using the video monitor as a slow monitor, uh, strobe light, I can change the color, I can change the timing of the strobe, and even I can use music as well. So I can synchronize the uh, changing of the strobe lights and, the, and uh, along to the music. So I had uh, many different type of advantage uh, uh, that, uh, if I compare to using just the streets or other um, the a typical strobe light which I, uh, I could buy at the science, as a science tool. So it was an idea to use a, a video monitor as a strobe light. Then, you know Hayao Miyazaki, the director of the famous animations? And uh, actually, uh, that, that video, and I was showing the, uh, my work to the kids, it was uh, a part of the TV program and uh, it was coincident. Hayao Miyazaki watching the TV. <laughs> and uh, he was planning to make Ghibli Museum in Tokyo, but uh, he was uh, basically a traditional animator, an anime director. So he wanted to show many of, us, uh, his, uh, many of things uh, from his film, but uh, uh, he was thinking it should be more fun for the uh, kids because it's a real 
um, real place, I, I mean uh, uh, real buildings and uh, uh, real installations and, and so on. So he asked me uh, to help to create the uh, gigantic version of Zotrop <laughs> with the idea of my installation. So you know, maybe, maybe some of you know the famous movie, My Neighbor Totoro. So I designed the position of the, uh, those uh, figures, and uh, yeah, I asked the professional uh, model, modelers uh, to create those uh, figures. So this is a permanent installation at the museum, so when you visit uh, the museum, you can see. Yeah. And later, the, some people from Pixar visited this museum, and uh, they stole the idea. <laughs> 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 maybe you should, you, some of you maybe know the Toy, the toy Story version of the idea. It's a stolen idea. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Totoro. Okay, so now I would like to go to the next part. The, after uh, making those installations and objects, I thought that I, uh, using a computer or digital technologies, I can, real, I can manipulate time and space uh, in real time. I thought that uh, this would be an uh, advantage of uh, using this uh, technology. So now I would like to demonstrate some of my old software. Here, just a moment. <clears throat> I'm gonna switch on. Yeah. Here, I have an old video camera connected to my laptop by USB. And uh, originally, I was using a, a little gamepad to control, but uh, I have a now a Bluetooth <laughs> remote controller. Yeah, I improved the software. <laughs> so, maybe just turn off, off the light. So here I stand. I hope it works. Yeah. So when I push one of the buttons, I can capture the image to the computer. And I change the pose. Then, so it's a very simple two-frame animation. Okay, so let's have a, let's try to do different type of things. <laughs> so you can easily try many different type of uh, animated images like this. And uh, for example, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's very simple, but it's very playful. So I would like to ask some of you, you can try. <laughs> Is there any? <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, j just ready first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, please stand on the white tape. Okay. Okay, I will take two frames. The please, please uh, have a. Okay, this is the first. Okay, the second. 
Okay? Let's see. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay, three, try. Yeah? I can change the sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, ready, go. Okay, second one. <laughs> okay, ready, go. Let's see. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice rhythm. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> First one. <laughs> okay, second one. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you like uh, maybe Dragon Ball? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is a very simple program which you can switch to the uh, switch between the two frames. So let's go to the other one. This is the uh, um, uh, it came from my uh, public installation, which is called Another Time, Another Space, and uh, actually. Uh, I can show you the basic effect. So now, my computer capturing many frames, more than 200. Then I push this key. Then I, I spin it. Yeah, like this. Then, for example, now we have a white box. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I switch on. And uh, I turn the box slowly. So you can easily make a modern art. <laughs> <laughs> and you also you can be a, a part of the modern art if you walk around. Okay, anyone, anyone wants to try? <laughs> Please, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's try. Okay. <laughs> okay, try. Maybe, maybe one more person. Please. Uh, just a moment. I, I wanna 
Move this one. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk like, like on a circle, and please, please chase me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here, okay. here, and here. Go, go this way. Okay. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> so it's easily to become becoming friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, let's let's do the different things. Okay, uh, maybe maybe one more, please, please come. Okay, please please stand on the side. Okay, okay. Now I sh can show you. Uh, the, some principle of this effect. For example, here I have no effect, right? Then when I push one of the button, now we have a two different time reference. So pre, please change your position <laughs> and 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 I just I just. Uh, Position. Adjust the position of your body. <laughs> okay. Try again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Do <it> again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And uh, please, please, uh, like, uh, move like this. So now I increase the number of the splitting five six seven eight and so on so and gradually it's reached to the original effect so this is a yeah basically principle of the this effect and even i have some different type of effect even you when you move slowly it looks very fast <laughs> <laughs> Keep moving. Or when you move very fast and uh, it becomes a ca noise. <laughs> and some other, yeah, distortion. Please, please chase each, each other. <laughs> oh, it's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, I installed, uh, uh, for example, at the station of uh, Antwerp, I installed more than 30 video monitors uh, in the inside of the hall of the uh, station. And uh, each monitor is connected uh, to the computer and the, and the video camera. So each monitor shown the different type of effect. And it was very, really, really enjoyable uh, public installation at the time. Then, OK, here I would like to show one more thing. Actually, uh, please turn on the projector. You have already seen the effect of the Zotro, right? Then, actually, uh, that effect, which your body distorted, is a kind of the digital effect. But I realized that uh, even not using a computer, we may have a similar effect. Then I can show you the very, very simple trial with this idea. Here I have a black cylinder, and uh, this one has a, oh, it's a little bit difficult to see, but uh, instead of having a normal street of the zoetrophs, I have a, a kind of the, uh, this, this kind of the, uh, how can I say, the threads around. Then I put this 
to this zoetrope. So now we can spin it. Then I want to illuminate the inside of this black cylinder. And uh, of course, it's better to see in, and by your real eyes, but uh, I, I will try to show you with this video camera. I hope it works. But, uh, I can spin it like this. Then, for example, I can put this wooden stick inside. So, can you see it? <laughs> so you can see the very, very similar effect without computer. And maybe this white scissors. <laughs> right? It's a little bit out of focus, but uh, yeah, you can see the effect, right? Yeah. So I found, oh, this could be um, useful to bend the real object in front of our eyes. Please close that projector. Then I created this morpho vision. So the idea is the uh, uh, I have a spinning, very fast spinning uh, real object on the table. And uh, there is a uh, projector and a uh, uh, mirror. And actually, uh, this mirror makes a kind of a scanning effect of the projected image. Then the projector shows just a thin line, like a, like a thread of this uh, uh, experiment. So I have shown this uh, in SIGGRAPH in Los Angeles uh, in maybe 2006 or something. So it's, this is a combination of the digital <laughs> technologies and the real things, but uh, you can change the type of the thread which is projected on the real uh, door house. And uh, you can see the real house is distorted by the, the, by the light in front of your eyes. So I would say this is also the uh, in, uh, reinvention of the uh, history of moving images. So the next part will be uh, uh, th things I wanted to show is the, about um, images, music, and the interactions. So here, I, w I had a little music box, which, uh, which has uh, uh, cranks. Please open it. Okay. So usually, music box uses uh, a metal drum with uh, little pins, but here uh, you can produce your own music on uh, uh, the paper strip like this. You can make holes as a musical score. Let's play one of the holes. So please listen.
Happy birthday. <laughs> I like this because I can control the speed like uh, three books. And uh, I bought this when I was a student. And uh, during I was watching this uh, patterns on the paper, I wondered if I change the direction of the, this paper, what would happen? So here there is an arrow to indicate the direction of the happy birthday song. But now I can change the direction and uh, I would like to pray from the end. Please listen what's going on. Like this. <laughs> I think this is better than original. <laughs> and actually, uh, I was really surprised. I didn't expect uh, yeah, such a beautiful melody from uh, a kind of the reversed happy birthday song. And uh, I, I started to think, what's going on here? And uh, I thought that uh, because uh, those patterns on the paper is so beautiful because it's originally played a very good music, happy birthday song. And uh, for example, if, the, if you have a nice abstract painting, even you can put, make it upside down, the beauty of the painting remains as it is. So here, even you can change the direction of the song, the beauty of the song, melody, remains. So then I thought that, uh, oh, there must be a possibility to think about the music is also two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Usually I, we think that the music is just uh, one direction, but uh, uh, maybe there is a possibility to play music in, a, in a different ways. So please. Oh, sorry. So here, this is a, one of the early trials to make music from the visuals. So there are four music, little tiny bugs walking on the screen, and uh, they react to the colors on the screen. So I can choose one of the color by using a computer mouse, and you can draw some lines on the screen. So when a bug across the one color dot, they play sounds like a yellow plays do, yellow green plays le do re mi fa sol si do like that. Then there is a technique to control the direction of the bug. For example, if you draw a white line, when a bug meets a white line, white dot, they go to the opposite direction. Can I have more sound? And the light, light gray means turning right. So you can play some color dots and you can make a melody like this. You can make a loop. And you, you can zoom in and out. And dark gray means turning left. And sometimes bug escapes. 
You can use tweezers. <laughs> so it's totally different from the uh, traditional musical score. It's interactive and it's two-dimensional. Okay, this is the music insect, and uh, I have created a permanent version, a permanent installation for the Exploratorium in San Francisco. And this is the, uh, another trial using a real grand piano. And uh, I imagine that uh, if I could play some lights or uh, yeah, images from the music box like this, and I thought that, uh, oh, maybe I could use a real grand piano, MIDI grand piano with a computer and a projector. So I placed two semi-transparent screen, horizontal and vertical. So you can use a trackball to draw some dots or lines on the horizontal screen. So all of the patterns, dots, which you draw on the screen, scrolling towards to the rear keyboard, And when the keyboard hit it by the pattern, so it plays the sound of the piano, and it generates a different type of flying uh, object on the vertical screen. So here, images plays sound, real sound of the piano, and the sound generates uh, moving images again. So this is the piano as image media, and I liked this idea. Then I thought that uh, maybe I could make a great performance with a pianist with a similar system. So fortunately, I had a chance to work with uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, who is a composer and a pianist, and I, we did a very uh, large-scale performance in Japan. So here, I created a special software. Uh, there are 88 lines create a round circle, round shape. And uh, each line is connected to the piano. Piano has 88 keys. And also, this is a different software. All of the information from the Ryuichi's piano came to uh, my software as a MIDI signal. And, uh, the pattern is generated by those MIDI information. So the bright, the loudness of the sound transformed into the brightness of the uh, lines on the sound. And here is a more experimental thing. This is a little video camera on the stage. Instead of using uh, Sakamoto's hand, he's trying to move his body to play the piano. So I wanted to connect different parts of his body to the real piano. And this is a... Uh, I used uh, two grand pianos, and uh, Ryuichi is playing the one piano on the left side, and uh, the images fly out from this piano and make a parabola to falling down to the second piano. The second found, found a piano is played by the image. So I wanted to create a very uh, unusual environment or musical instrument for the musicians using a computer technologies and the real uh, pia, pia, uh, traditional musical instruments. Thank you very much.
And uh, also I created a, yeah, a kind of the software uh, for the uh, Nintendo DS. So this is a, a kind of the uh, little correction of the idea from my installation. So I thought that the LCD monitor is like a thin water. So I wanted to have a, a kind of electronic uh, specimen uh, inside of that uh, thin, water, thin, water, thin water. So they can react to your drawings or your movement or sound and so on. So you can, here you can draw lines and uh, you can easily create your own musical patterns. I have 10 different software in one package. And also, this is a device which I created for the performance with Ryuichi. So there is a, a table which looks like a game of chess or game of go, and you can place uh, grass balls on the top of the table, and you can immediately create the uh, musical patterns. So I really liked this idea, and uh, then I started to collaborate with Yamaha and uh, create a a uh, handheld version of that uh, machine, and which is called the Tenorion. Okay, now I have a Tenorion here. Okay, sorry. So maybe I can make a little demonstration. So please turn on the okay. So here, I have uh, two screens on the both sides, yeah? And uh, this is the uh, real LED switches, 16 by 16. And uh, you can push one of the button. And uh, yeah, you can play some sounds. And uh, if you keep pushing, you can press dot on the screen, and you can make a melody. So, horizontal direction is a, a time, and the vertical direction is a key. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is Tenorion, and uh, I would like to introduce my sound lens as well. So this is a very small device, and uh, you, can, you can use it like, uh, I don't know, Walkman or iPod or something. And uh, you can connect to the your headphone like this. And uh, actually, uh, this machine, this device, transform any light into the sound. This is the idea. And actually, uh, with that, uh, pre pre uh, with the previous um, trials works, and actually uh, I had to use computer to combine images and uh, sound, and uh, images and uh, uh, light patterns and so on. And uh, but uh, here I wanted to uh, get the sound from the real light itself. This is the idea. Then you can hold the device like this. And they, in, this was an installation uh, version. And uh, you can try different type of uh, light sources in the exhibition area. And uh, even you can carry, you can bring the one of the sound lens in the city. This is uh, Shibuya in Tokyo. And uh, there are thousands of millions of light sources in the city. So, uh, so, can, so you can hear the sound of the light escapes. And I also made a, a tour <laughs> with the uh, audiences. So uh, let's say uh, instead of using uh, sightseeing, it's a kind of the uh, light hearing tour. <laughs> so sounds of the vendor machines and some other yeah, LED displays and so on. So they really enjoyed about it. OK, now I, can, I would like to quickly demonstrate the Sound lens. So it works. So now I think in the States, the 
power generator generates a 50 hertz, right? So this is the sound of the 50 hertz. Our eye, because of the after image, which we already tried in the beginning of this workshop, our lecture, and uh, we cannot see the very fast uh, blinking of the light, but actually it's blinking. So with this device, you can hear the sound of the uh, blink, blinking of the light itself. And uh, for example, could you open it? So let's try this one. So this is the sound of this projector. High tone means it's more fast, faster. Yeah, rapidly printing. So this is the sound of this projector. And uh, here I brought uh, remote controller, remote controller of my uh, room illumination. Even we cannot see the light, but uh, this uh, uh, this is uh, the this uh, remote controller uses infrared light, so our eye cannot see, but uh, there is a light exist. And actually, yeah, each co remote controller has a different pattern. So this is another remote controller of the illumination. <laughs> like a melody. I think a craft work designed it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even yesterday I realized that this computer mouse uses uh, infrared light technologies. Let's listen to the voice of the mouse. <laughs> okay, and uh, I would like to sh introduce a special musical instrument which I have created. Yeah. Now you see everything the same, but actually uh, each LED light brings uh, in a different speed. You can sing if you want. And then you can use your fingers. Actually, uh, I have one more part, but uh, maybe it's too long. <laughs> really? 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, please close it. Okay, I have uh, one, one more thing to introduce. So I, I would like to uh, talk about the creating children books. And actually, yeah, yeah, 
uh, as I told you, I would like to connect uh, the, those media arts stuff and the children's books together. So, <coughs> okay. Is this interesting? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> okay. And actually, yeah, this is my first daughter. And uh, she's already a high school student. But uh, uh, in 2000, I got a first child. And I became a father. And actually, uh, I was. I was making a lot of um, art installations and uh, objects which I already introduced to in this presentation. But uh, after I got a daughter, simply I started to think if those things are like uh, electronic devices, computers, and digital things, if it's good for the small children. This is naturally came up to me as a fa one of the father. Then strongly I recalled my childhood. Actually at that time there were no computers. Of course we have a t television and uh, some electronic, electronic things but uh, no, almost no digital devices. And I enjoyed making many things, many toys by myself. And uh, I thought that uh, in our age, in daughter's age, and uh, it's very difficult to keep distance from the, those digital technologies. And uh, I thought that uh, maybe I should try to make something for children without any digital technologies and uh, high-tech things. Then I started to make a handmade toys for my daughter. <laughs> so this is this was the uh, uh, this was shoot uh, in uh, uh, NHK uh, Jap uh, Japanese national television. Yeah, and I used the uh, uh, board <laughs> and the many uh, cheap materials uh, making a handmade toy. It's totally different from those <laughs> high-tech things. But, uh, yeah, and actually, yeah, I really enjoyed a lot. I really enjoyed a lot. Actually, yeah, before I started making handmade toys, I have never drawn something by my hand for my artwork. And actually, yeah, I have never made a story like this. So here, we are trying to create a little paper dolls with a very simple ideas. I have drawn some parts of the animal <laughs> and cut it out and I connected with a small metal pin <laughs> and I created all <laughs> those with my daughter. And every time I create one new character, new story came up with my, our mind. And we make a story together. So this was a very, very new experience for me. So here I have uh, some uh, Oh, yeah. yeah I can show you the real thing here. So this is uh, one of the uh, first uh, paper dolls which I created. Hangao and the koala and the penguins. So my daughter herself and I created them many. So here uh, I brought some examples. This is the uh, yeah, little turtle and uh, you can you can move the <laughs> legs and head and like this. So it's like a 
little animation. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Yeah, you can, you can change the shape. And uh, this is the uh, elephant. And the uh, elephant uh, got the uh, water. And uh, you can see he uh, like this, right? Maybe, maybe I can show you some more. <laughs> I have many. <laughs> <laughs> For example, this is a uh, watering can. Uh, little penguin holding this. And this is a pot. pot. And uh, the little penguin gave up some water to the pot. And uh, so there's a leaf like this. And more water. And then we got a flower <laughs> like this. So we can make a story with this. So, for example, the trains and the connect to each other <laughs> like this. Yeah, and uh, you can you can put the penguins on this, like this. So it's very easy to connect each other. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have many, but uh, then suddenly I got, uh, uh, actually, yeah, uh, I created many, many those, um, uh, such as uh, um, handmade toys and uh, Actually, yeah, I created a book about the, our life with a, a handmade things. And then I got the email from a publisher, of a, a famous publisher of children's books in Tokyo. Then they asked me if you have an interest to make a children's books. Then I thought that uh, actually, yeah, I like the illustrated children's books from my, from my uh, childhood a lot. So I decided to make something for my daughter. But uh, actually, yeah, I didn't have any idea because I have never created uh, stories or characters, but I already created those uh, little toys. So maybe, maybe uh, I can try something. Then my daughter entered to the uh, elementary school and she became uh, um, the first grade of the elementary school and she started learn math, but uh, she didn't get how to count the numbers. And uh, actually, yeah, she remember from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, 10, 11, 12, but uh, she couldn't understand the decimal system. So she, this was her problem. Then I just got the idea, maybe I can combine books and uh, this decimal system then, actually, yeah, when you open the book, there is a spread like, like this, right? Two faces. Then, when I started to think, maybe I can put five on the left and uh, another five on the right. Oh, it's perfectly fit to the book. Oh, this would be a good idea. But uh, then you can turn the page there will be another 10 numbers. So you can easily understand the system of the decimal. Then I started to think, what would, the, would be the best, best motif for this idea? Then I thought that uh, maybe the easiest way is to uh, put the 10 apples, then 10 bananas, and so on. But uh, it's, it's boring, <laughs> I thought. Then I started to think, when we count the numbers, it gradually start to big. If I count, it's a, it makes bigger and bigger. So I thought that, uh, oh, what, what is the most best, best motive for this idea? 
Then I suddenly realized, oh, the building. Building is the uh, very good motive for this idea. Then at the same time, I got the idea to change the direction of the book like this. Then I created the book of the uh, House of 100 <laughs> Stories. Yeah, here, Eric already introduced a little bit. So this is the uh, uh, illustrated book, which you can enjoy the each uh, rooms, floors, and you can count from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. And then this is the uh, house of the uh, mouse, mice. And uh, if you turn the page, there are another 10 stories, but uh, uh, there, there is a squirrel yeah, living in there. <laughs> so every time you turn the page, uh, you meet uh, different animals or creatures. So this is the idea. Every time children turn the page, oh, what's, going, uh, what's the next? And uh, they can start to count. And uh, actually, uh, this was really, uh, this is my first uh, uh, commercial uh, children's books ever, but uh, it was really successful. Then, actually, uh, yeah, this is the uh, image like this. And I have uh, three more books. And the uh, very interesting thing is uh, at first I was thinking making children's books is a kind of the one-way creation. I create a story, illustration, and uh, actually uh, children or parents read it. This, this is not interactive at all. But uh, soon I realized that uh, children who liked my book started to draw illustrations by themselves. And uh, I got uh, a lot of offers to make a uh, Workshop, workshops for kids and uh, uh, their parents. And uh, this, these are the photos of the, one of the workshops at the elementary school. And I asked them to draw some uh, yeah, houses with uh, their favorite uh, animals or characters. So they are so wonderful. So then fi the finally, uh, we can connect all of the drawings of the kids on the floor. So we can make a different version of my work. <laughs> and here, more than 180 kids in uh, kindergarten. So I asked to draw <laughs> one picture each. Then Finally, we connect all of them. Yeah, it was a really, really good, good moment. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I must tell you that uh, I started from a very analog age. And uh, I went through the digital technologies and the new, te new technologies and high technologies. And I really enjoyed about it. But uh, now I, am s I started to doubt maybe uh, the world is keep going to the digital things. But uh, maybe for the, especially for the small kids, even for adults, may, we, we shouldn't forget about the possibility of the papers or some other ma analog materials. Maybe uh, we should try to keep uh, going to use both analog and the digital and make a, a very good bridge between two of them. And uh, I think I am a, a kind of I I am I am a kind of a, I have a law to tell the uh, possibility of those things. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So no, thank you, Toshio. I, I think, um, and I have to tell, uh, tell you that uh, if, if you feel like Toshio uh, covered everything he has done, you are wrong. 
<laughs> this was only a selection. <laughs> but anyway, um, so um, it, it's late, but I think that if you have, this is a rare opportunity to ask if you have a couple of urgent questions from Toshio, if you want to hear or comment or hear something about um, some aspect of the work that he spoke about. So please, uh, we have a microphone here, so please feel free to ask. At the back, the first one. Hello, Hi. my name is Jonathan. I um, loved your presentation. I really like the fact that you um, inverse this relationship between noise and signal, especially when you're capturing the, the light mm -hmm. effects mm -hmm. and kind of uh, listening to how it sounds. You mean, you mean this one? Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and, and kind of like paying attention to, or focusing on the actual noise, the background noise, and then reimagining that or like reproducing that uh, into like signal so that yeah. it's pleasant to the, to the hearing. And I was just wondering if what other kind of experiments or, or work you've done with like signal and noise relationship? Uh, actually, yeah, I wanted to, uh, actually, yeah, I have created a lot of, uh, uh, how can I say, software by myself. When I wanted to combine uh, images and the sounds, or images and the music, I tried to combine, to use a very special software for, for it. But I soon realized, oh, it's a kind of artificial combination. But uh, using this device, we can naturally uh, how can I say, reveal the system or uh, the behind of the technologies. And uh, I think this is very, very interesting uh, experience for it. So I didn't uh, want to add some uh, special, I don't know if uh, special circuit or some digital software uh, to change or modify the, uh, this effect. But uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, of course, like, like you saw already, it could be a, a musical performance, musical instrument with a, in a different way, but uh, yeah. I, I, for, for this, I wanted to keep the sim simplicity. Yeah. So, who's next? You're next. Uh, thank you for your wonderful thank presentation, you. and thank you for all your work. I've been a fan thank of you your work much. since I encountered it at the Barbican Centre in 1998, and uh, you brought me so much inspiration. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, much of your work is very playful, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that it goes beyond playful. It's something to do with a rich sensory engagement with the world. Mm -hmm. When you are designing, do you use your rational mind to analyze the situation, or do you follow your or intuition, or maybe some combination uh, of both? I don't know, but uh, maybe uh, everyone has a, a kind of the eyes of artificial, uh, artistic side and uh, maybe scientific side. And I think, I think that from my childhood, always uh, I was, uh, I enjoyed both of them. So when you, I created this one, I would like to point to the how we can, how can I say, uh, reveal the behind of the technologies. This is a, a kind of the scientific, yeah, um, the interest. But uh, at the same time, I, I'm gonna try to find a very fun, fun stuff, interesting, thing, or beauty of the technologies, or beauty of the nature. So this is always come up with, uh, to my mind. Yeah, thank you very much. He has my telonium. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, before my question, I just want to mention when I was in high school, mm -hmm. I had to write an essay for whose number one artistic influence you would like to meet. And needless to say, I wrote an essay about. Oh, really? You. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really honored please, to be please here. Please make a copy <laughs> of the essay. I'll find it. Um, oh. As for my question, um, I have uh, encountered your work throughout my life in different times without realizing it was all connected to the same person, like mm -hmm. uh, Otoki when I was really oh, young. Oh, you know Otoki. And uh, <laughs> Sim Tunes. Oh, you know. Um, but I noticed a lot of times you uh, were working with Nintendo, mm -hmm. it's like o Otoki, uh, Sound Fantasy, mm -hmm. Electroplankton. Mm -hmm. So my question was, um, what 
is your relationship with Nintendo like, and how did it influence you? Because I see a lot of like uh, Gunpei Yokoi lateral mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. with your technology oh. in your work. Uh -huh. So I was curious, like, is that influence for you, and uh -huh. what is your relationship like working with them? Are you one of the otaku? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, actually, uh, when uh, I exhibited many of those things at uh, my solo exhibition or group exhibition, I maybe uh, I, I met, uh, for example, Shigeru Miyamoto and uh, Satoshi uh, Iwata and, uh, at the exhibition, and they came to see my works. And actually, uh, when I created uh, one installation of the two frames performance, which you, I, I showed already, and uh, actually, uh, Miyamoto, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto really enjoyed those things. Because the, uh, I am an artist, and uh, I have uh, no limitation of the how, how can I say, uh, using uh, technologies. But uh, they are making a consumer product. Always I, they are trying to find uh, cheap devices or something which fits to the many uh, audiences, players. But uh, I have a, a kind of freedom to use uh, ca some la latest technologies and the new devices and uh, to make uh, more fun or more experimental things. And I think the for example, Nintendo people watching me <laughs> and uh, what is the next? <laughs> and always and, uh, they ask me, oh, for example, Shigeru Miyamoto said that uh, she, he was saying that uh, uh, their, uh, his colleagues, you should see the Toshio's work. Uh, then I had uh, many visitors from Nintendo and I explained about uh, what's the most fun stuff with the technologies and so on. So we influenced each other. And actually, uh, when I was a, a university student, I really enjoyed Super Mario. And this was uh, one of the great inspiration. Oh, we can control the Mario with sound and image. You, when you push the button, you can jump the Mario as a Mario, and you can break the block. And this combination is the, of the sound and the image is the, very, very uh, exciting thing for me. So it, it's, it's a, a kind of the collaborative yeah, conversations with the Nintendo people or other yeah, uh, com commercial software things and the artistic things. Yeah, I think Thank so. you. Next, who was next? Hmm. Jimmy. Hi, Toshio. Hi. Hi, so I actually have a very similar question, mm -hmm. but I guess, um, it's just overwhelming that just you just one human being builds so much stuff that are so cool. Um, I wonder, because um, are you also in charge of the technical side of every product you make, or are you just coming up with ideas and also tell like your team to build up all these products? Uh, actually, yeah, always I try to make uh, a working prototype by myself. And uh, otherwise, I cannot uh, uh, say, oh, this is this would be wonderful product. So I learned uh, programming by myself, and I learned uh, making uh, uh, the electronic circuit by myself. And uh, actually, uh, um, every time I wanted to make a new thing, I needed I needed a new technical skills and uh, uh, information. I searched the uh, uh, internet or went to Akihabara to get the new devices, parts, and so on. And then I tried to make something by myself. And, uh, and uh, of course, I started to brush up those things. And uh, behind the final work, I have a lot of trials and some mistakes and so on. But uh, then okay, this would, be, this would work to show people, or this would work to make a product or software, commercial software. And then I start to, let's say, oh, this may be a very good idea for Yamaha, for example. Maybe I had a chance to meet Yamaha people before, and then I made a contact. I have a good idea for the new products, and let's try to collaborate. And then it takes a long time to make a prototype. For example, I needed seven years to make Tenorium. 
and uh, but uh, yeah, I I think uh, yeah it worth to try it. Yeah. Next. Huh. Anyone? So yep. there's one yep. at the front. Hi. I <laughs> 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 uh, thank you for all your artwork. It's been thank you very much. Uh, very uh, mm -hmm. inspiring for me in my mm -hmm. life. And um, can you talk a little bit about um, your relationship to music in your early life? Like, was your family musical, or did you play any instruments? Or uh, um, yeah, actually, yeah, I wished I could play piano, for example. But uh, once I asked my mom, maybe, maybe it was uh, I was a student of university, and uh, why? you didn't allow me to running a piano. And uh, she said, you said no. <laughs> oh, I was very disappointed about it. <laughs> but anyway, and uh, when I was a, a high school boy, I started to uh, play guitar, for example. But I have never got the good skill playing guitar. And my friend, he was really good. So if I compare to him, oh, I was really shocked. And, uh, but I think that uh, after uh, m many years later, when I got a computer, I started to uh, compose music with a ready-made uh, musical software. And it was really fun. And, uh, but uh, still, uh, I thought that, oh, this is very difficult to write uh, notes on the musical scores and so on. And uh, then I started to think that maybe there will be a best software which ev even me, like a visual person, can manipulate or create the music. But uh, I couldn't find it. So I created the music, Mika <laughs> Inskriks and Tenorions and so on. Yeah, so yeah, I think that uh, if I was a uh, uh, very good uh, musician, Maybe I didn't create them. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we can take maybe one more question, or if mm -hmm. anybody have. Okay, so well. So. Thanks. I, hello. Hi. Okay, <laughs> this works. All right. Um, so I was just wondering, how, sort of, how you found your direction as an artist and whether you ever felt like you were working on something that you didn't care about and like how you overcame like frustrating situations like what was your general outlook uh sorry i i, I really didn't get uh, what what the yeah main question there. so i was just asking how you sort of found your direction as an artist and decided uh, I, I see. what to focus on mm -hmm. and then also if you ever felt like you were focusing on something that didn't really matter to you and how you mm -hmm. sort of dealt with that i, I see so and actually, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, I started, uh, actually, uh, when I entered the university, I entered to the industrial design course. And actually, uh, but uh, soon I was really interested in making uh, animation films. And uh, I, 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 I was in an industrial design course for two years or something, but uh, actually I quit. Then I decided to create a more, how can I say, artistic things in the same university. Then um, there are some when I graduate the uh, university, I, there are some chance to work with uh, uh, the older uh, students, friends, which uh, I knew already, and they are working at a company. And uh, I went to them, to, uh, to the company, and I helped something. And, uh, and uh, actually, yeah, I knew, I a li little bit knew about the system of the society. <laughs> yeah. Then I thought that uh, maybe uh, I should be a, a kind of a free, freelance artist from the beginning. Once I entered to the company, maybe I cannot escape. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I don't know if this is my, uh, how, how can I say, instinct. Yeah. And uh, I was, I, I think, I thought that uh, I should keep my own uh, kind of road or something, yeah? And uh, it would be very hard, but it would be 
fantastic for me. Yeah, even yeah, if could be a poor artist, but uh, uh, I I want I thought that I should try to create something very very new, which people never seen before like that. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to keep this mind right now. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask to, to end, so mm -hmm. very brief question for you. So the, because you mentioned, so, uh, so you came from the, uh, from the Tsukuba University, mm -hmm. like actually, which is a wonderful department that produced many of the leading Japanese media mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. And you were also studying so, with some great professors uh, pioneering Japanese media, yeah, just like Kachuhiro, yeah, yeah, I was so Yama, lucky. Yamaguchi and, and Komura-san. Yeah, yes. So what, what did you, can you briefly say, what did you get from your teachers, these great teachers that, um, that you were lucky to work with? Yeah, actually, Maybe yeah, this is yeah, yeah, this would, this would be a very long story, but uh, the actually, yeah, they, they did a wonderful uh, classes. And actually, yeah, they gave us uh, very wonderful tasks, yeah. And uh, yeah, I can, I can strongly remember each tasks, so I cannot forget. And uh, actually, yeah, I, I have shown the, some uh, old works like uh, copy Fenakis' scope or uh, this free books with uh, x Porter. I created those in the classroom from the task. Yeah, and actually, yeah, it's, it wasn't uh, uh, the cross of the animation or whatever, but uh, uh, I a little bit changed <laughs> the main <laughs> theme, yeah, of the task. And uh, I, I was trying to keep making animation things for all of the, yeah, crosses. And actually, yeah, that, uh, that's a combination that the task is itself was very fascinated. And uh, it's in the, it was really interesting. And uh, still I remember very well. And, uh, I, and uh, at the same time, I, was, I had an interest about the history of the animation. And uh, I'm always thinking that uh, this task could be uh, making a free book somehow or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I was trying to make it. And, uh, uh, I can maybe maybe I can proud that the, uh, the even the uh, task of the uh, uni from my university class could be uh, uh, could be shown as a very very good example of my beginning of the my artwork. I think this is a very important thing. So Toshio, um, thank you for sharing so much of your life and your creative mm. process and. I really hope that this is inspirational for the uh, younger generations of media artists, book designers, yeah. graphic designers, and many other creative yeah. people yeah. in let's, the future. Let's, let's, say, let's say one thing, because yes. yeah, even in Japan, I have never taught at the university. So this is, from tomorrow, I will have a master class for the undergraduates and the graduates. So this will be a very new thing for me and a very challenging thing for me. But uh, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.